The new Galaxy S21 FE is pretty much everything you want from a flagship at a lower price, but can its camera match up to the best camera phones around? We took the new S21 FE for a spin along with the Google Pixel 6 and the iPhone 13, so let's see if the S21 FE can keep up or even beat those two. And shout out to our sponsor Smallrig who makes some great accessories for enthusiast videographers, more on them towards the end of this video. But first, let's take a quick look at the camera specs and first just the physical size of the main camera sensor. It is actually in favor of the Pixel 6 which has the biggest sensor followed by the Galaxy and the iPhone has the smallest sensor of these three. But keep in mind that these are pretty big sensors for phone sizes. However, the iPhone also does have the widest aperture which means that it lets in more light and kind of compensates for that relatively smaller sensor. Not much of a difference in terms of ultra wide camera specs, but what is unique on the Galaxy S21 FE that you don't get on the other two phones is a zoom camera, a 3 times zoom camera while the other two phones only use digital zoom. So first we test the front camera and right now I'm recording a video with the front cameras on all three phones. And as you can see there are slight differences in colors, but again you also see some differences in the dynamic range as well. And uh, the iPhone seems to be capturing a slightly wider perspective compared especially to the Galaxy S21 FE which is kind of cropped in. And this is also a test of the video stabilization. One thing I noticed on the viewfinder is that the color of my jacket, which is black, here on the iPhone appears a bit washed out while you get a much more natural color on the Galaxy and the Pixel. Okay, and kicking this off, looking at some selfies, all three phones did a great job with this group shot, with the Pixel and the iPhone having more saturated colors and a bit more detail, but in the next few selfies you can notice that the Pixel captures a bit too dark and moody of a shot, and it really is the Galaxy that brightens up my face for the most pleasing look and the cleanest detail. Selfies in low light don't look nearly as good on either phone, but if we had to pick a favorite, we'd go with the Pixel which has a slightly cleaner detail. Interestingly the Google Pixel also recorded the brightest selfie video at night but at the expense of having more noise in the footage while the other two are doing a better job handling that. Okay selfie camera aside let's get to the main course, the main camera and during the day you have plenty of light and clear detail with photos on all three phones but where they do differ is in the actual color reproduction. The Pixel goes for this very flat look and photos on it lack in contrast and appear a bit bleak. Whites appear a bit grayish oftentimes and every now and then you get a great photo but most of the time everything is a bit too flat and it's not our favorite look. Now the Galaxy on the other hand goes for the opposite, for these juicy vibrant colors, it lifts up the shadows and often has the brightest exposure. Actually oftentimes images look so similar on the iPhone and the Galaxy during the day. I did notice however there were some slight differences. For example, in these shots in the park and by the sea, the iPhone properly shows the color of my jacket as black, while the Galaxy makes it look almost purple and kind of washed out. I also love using portrait mode to blur the background, but this is one area where the Google Pixel seems to be lagging behind. First, at 1x portrait mode, it still crops in quite a bit, so it's not a true 1x mode while you can get a much wider portrait on a Galaxy or an iPhone. And second, since it uses digital zoom, the detail is mushy and just not as clean as the other two. You also have the option to zoom in a bit on the Pixel and that makes the issues with detail even worse. The iPhone on the other hand only supports 1x portraits and we notice that it is hard to get the portrait effect to actually work in the camera app, so you have to kind of adjust the phone a bit. So this round has to go to the Galaxy, which has both the most versatility with 1x and 3 times zoom, by the way 3 times zoom works brilliantly well with portraits, it also recognizes the scene much faster the Galaxy and quality is generally outstanding. And speaking of 3 times zoom check out these photos, not portrait mode just regular photos where the Galaxy just destroys the Pixel and the iPhone 
which both lack a telephoto camera. Detail is just so much cleaner on the Galaxy, it's not even fair. I also love using the ultra wide camera for this epic view that you can get with it, but while the Galaxy and iPhone are quite similar, the Pixel actually has a narrower view that barely qualifies as an ultra wide. Now, for all the rest, during the day you get the same flat colors on the Pixel like with the main camera, which just don't have as much pop as those on the iPhone and the Galaxy. It's hard to pick a favorite between the Galaxy and the iPhone, so we have to call this one a draw between them. When night falls though, the otherwise slightly disappointing Google Pixel comes to life. Using computational photography magic, and we don't use this lightly, it is able to capture super clean detail and beautiful colors, while the iPhone and the Galaxy often struggle with various issues from white balance to over sharpening and others. If you like taking a lot of photos in low light, the Pixel is still an absolute champ and it's the one that easily wins this round. And even using the ultra wide camera at night, take a look at this picture of the road, it's such a lovely shot from the Pixel. Finally, let's also take a look at video recording quality. First thing in the test is video stabilization, so let's move around just walking slowly and see which phone has the best video stabilization. should be able to get a good idea about the video stabilization. Now let's also slowly move the cameras around to see how they adjust different lighting against the sunset skies. Okay, next up let's try and switch to the ultra wide cameras on all of the phones. Switching to the ultra wide cameras. 0.5x. Only the Pixel 6 has not as wide a camera as the other two. And this is the kind of perspective that you get, much wider. Let's also move the cameras around. Right now I'm talking to the iPhone 13. This is an audio test. Right now I'm talking to the Galaxy S21 F. This is an audio test. And right now I'm talking to the Google Pixel 6. This is an audio test. All right, next up we have video in low light and as it's getting dark, you can see that the cameras perform quite differently and of course the quality is not quite as good, the detail is not as clean during, as during the day. Let's also switch to the ultra wide cameras really quickly to see if they are any good in low light. So right now using the ultra wide cameras on all three phones. Let's switch back to the main cameras now. All right, follow me around. Check out the moon. It's really interesting if you can see the moon on the cameras. Okay, and speaking of great video, our sponsor Small Rig makes a bunch of accessories to take your phone video recordings to the next level. Check out this cage for the iPhone 13 Pro that we have here made out of metal. It is extremely durable and the iPhone fits inside it like a glove. It is also easy to slip the phone in and also take it out of that cage. And having such a cage on your phone not only adds extra protection, but comes with pre-drilled holes so you can attach all sorts of accessories as you can see right here. For example, you can have a handle that helps for a better grip and less shake and jitter in videos. And we have also added this cool double-faced LED video light that is just great for low light shooting. You can also easily add in a microphone to also increase your audio quality or set your device on a tripod. Best of all, the cage also allows you to mount custom lenses on top of your phone camera. The small rig cage has clicky buttons and you still have access to all the buttons including the mute switch and lightning port on your iPhone. It's a brilliant tool for video makers and I'm super excited to use it whenever I want to capture something truly incredible. So check out the links in the description below to get your cage and video accessories by small rig and up your smartphone video game right now. So at the end of the day, the Galaxy S21 FE did well, but maybe just a bit short of what we expected from it. The camera experience was reliable though, and it captures these vibrant, lovely colors during the day that impress. And it excels with portrait mode, zoomed shots, selfies, only at night and with video it underperforms a bit and you can tell that it's just a bit less capable than the competition. Then there is the Pixel 6 and having the lowest price means we can cut it some slack here. 
it was brilliant in low light but during the day we found that colors were a bit bleak and overall photos appear a bit too flat not really our cup of tea Finally, the iPhone was a solid performer all around, still holding the crown for best video recording in the industry and it only disappointed us with its zoom performance and some low light shots where it lacked in detail compared to the Pixel. So which one is the best? Well, depending on what you value most, what you shoot most, it really is a tough choice between these three excellent camera phones. But do let us know, which one would you go for and why do you like it? So let me know in the comments. That's been it for this camera comparison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel here, Phone Arena, if you enjoyed watching this. My name is Vic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.